Hi, I'm John Anello. I'm the service manager for Safe and Sound Electric. Today I want to talk about what is a circuit breaker. Uh, they're in all of our homes, but uh, not everyone knows exactly what to do once a circuit breaker trips. Uh, what a breaker is, is a device that's specifically designed to prevent dangerous situations from happening. Uh, those dangerous situations include a short, which means that the hot and the ground or the neutral are touching uh, before it gets to the light bulb or load on that circuit and it produces a lot of heat and it can eventually lead to fires. That's why these breakers trip to prevent that kind of situation. Besides that, they also trip when there is an overload. An overload typically happens when you're using uh, several devices that require a lot of electricity on the same circuit at the same time. In general, devices that either get really hot or really cold draw a lot of power. So those devices include especially hair dryers, freezers, refrigerators, and air conditioning, as well as microwaves and toaster ovens. Those things draw a lot of power and you want to avoid using multiples of those in the, on the same circuit at the same time. So for instance, let's say you have a whole bunch of relatives over for the holidays and everybody's trying to get ready at the exact same time. And typically in that situation, multiple hair dryers are going on at the same time. And because maybe they're in a bathroom that you don't usually use all the time, you forget about these things. What you don't realize is that in older homes, they're on the same circuit and it trips, uh, it trips the breaker. So in that situation, you want to relax, don't panic, and you grab a flashlight to try and figure out uh, where is the breaker and what exactly happened. Now, first thing, you need to find all of the panels in your house. Uh, you know, because there's a main breaker, a main panel that's usually close to the meter uh, that's in the basement or garage or something like that, but it's not uncommon to have several different uh, panels. You know, one or two sub-panels scattered throughout the house somewhere, or maybe it's a sub-panel specifically for stuff on a generator. That happens all the time that people check the main panel and they forget about those sub-panels and they wonder why they can't reset the breaker. So, once you find, you need to go through and find the electrical panel, start at the main, and go around and open it up, touch the handle of each breaker. You want to find out that each breaker is, you want to touch it in the position of on and make sure it doesn't really move that much. Eventually, you'll get to one where the tension on that handle is slightly different. This breaker is in the tripped position. There's on, off, and the center is the tripped position. Now, when you turn it toward on, it doesn't go. But sometimes in, um, on some breakers, it, it will go in the on position, but the breaker is not actually on. See, the way breakers work is that they have all kinds of internal parts. This is um, the exact same breaker as these, but it's clear, so you can see what's going on. This is in the off position. That's in the on position. Off, on. So what that means is, in order to reset a tripped breaker, you have to turn it all the way off first, and then you turn it on because that will make sure it's on for sure. Now, something to consider is that um, if you turn it in the off position and then turn it back on and it trips immediately, sort of like this one, it trips like that. What that means is um, it could be that there is a short in the panel in the, in the circuit somewhere, or it could be a defective breaker, but it's quite common to have a short so after you unplugged all those hair dryers that are going on at the same time and the breaker still does not reset properly, what you want to do is go through the house and you need to search every single room. You start by turning on the main light in the room and see if that goes on. If it works, then don't worry about it. That's not, that's on a different circuit. And after you turn on the light, check all the outlets. If there's a device plugged in there, like let's say a TV, Turn the TV on. If the TV works, great. It's it's not the problem. Uh, if you find a device that does not turn on, like let's say a stereo system, uh, you want to make sure you unplug that. Um, and then you keep moving throughout the whole house and unplug anything that's in the off, that does not turn on. That's anything that's on that same breaker. Now it's important to realize that 
you have to check the whole house because there could be things in the attic or the basement that you forget about. With older homes, it's, it's quite common to have, let's say, a circuit that controls a couple of receptacles on the second floor, uh, a few lights on the second floor, lighting in the attic, and a few receptacles and lights in the basement. Now, it seems kind of strange to have the attic and the basement on the same circuit, but it's actually quite common. In older homes, as things are added and um, over time, you typically tap off of whatever junction box is most convenient. So if that junction box happens to feed a few things in the attic, but that junction box in the basement, typically people uh, uh, tap off of that because it's most convenient. So it might seem counterintuitive to have things in the basement and the attic on the same circuit, but it's quite common. I see it all the time. So just make sure you go through the whole house because it's always the room that you don't check that's where the problem will be. Once you unplug all the devices that are off and try and keep the switches in the off position on all those circuits that you find, go back to the panel and then you try and reset the breaker. Uh, hopefully that you'll be able to reset the breaker in that situation and everything will turn back on. And then one by one you plug each device back in and that will eliminate uh, where the problem is because it's quite common for let's say you have you know this radio that you bought 20 years ago and uh, over time it could have a short in it so it's quite common to have a short in those individual appliances it's also possible that that short is in the house wiring and it could be somewhere so try and eliminate the problems yourself try and find out um, if the problem is just in a simple plug-in device. In that case, you should probably throw out that device and then you continue operating as normal. But in the event you can't find the problem in that situation, that's when you need to call a licensed electrician. This is John Anello from Safe and Sound Electric. Thanks.